For purposes of uh, clarification, if you could state your name for us, sir. Zev Kedem. Sir, first may I say this is an honor to meet you. My name is Sean. I'm a reporter. Uh, for purposes of clarification, you are one of the Schindler Jews, as they're called, who was actually rescued as a result of Mr. Schindler's actions, correct? Almost correct. In, I'm really a Schindler's List reject insofar that I was on Schindler's List, but I got kicked off it and sent back to Auschwitz uh, after being on it for about a week. How many people did that happen to? It happened to five boys who were considered to be underage by the local uh, garrison commander who was a hardcore Nazi in Schindler's safe haven. And he caught one of the boys um, who thought that they, they felt safe then, and that he brought uh, everybody out and found the other four, including myself, put us on a train with our fathers uh, because he didn't like the idea that Schindler had made arrangements to uh, get the women that were trapped at Auschwitz to join in his safe haven in Czechoslovakia. So he was getting his own back at Schindler by sending us back to Auschwitz. Did you ever interact with or actually lay eyes upon Oskar Schindler? Oh, yes. I, I saw him, but the truth is that he was very busy and preoccupied in wheeling and dealing and trying to save a thousand lives. And uh, to me, being an ignorant kid of about 10, 10 and a half, uh, I was suspicious of any German, and therefore I had no real understanding what he was doing for us, except that I heard that everybody sort of venerated him and respected him. But I, I kept my cautious distance from him. I know that we're dealing with memories that are 60 years separated from where we are right now, but after all this time, when the name Auschwitz is brought forth, what immediately to this day comes to mind first? Um, sleeping under a mud-covered blanket with my muddy boots double-tied and keeping the extremities of my hands and my head covered under the muddy blanket because uh, ravenous rats were running over the top of the blankets. That's just one of about a dozen uh, specific yes. ideas, yes. Uh, what did the film, so far as the film Schindler's List, in your experience, what did, was there anything that you felt that the film may have left out that did, it didn't correctly address or fully address? I think that the, uh, that first of all, I think that Spielberg is a genius in communication because he undertook an impossible subject and brought it to the consciousness of the world. And he did this by eliminating things. Uh, because if he had presented the absolute truth of what went on, uh, no normal pe uh, person could absorb it. He uh, represented the essential truth, connected it to a powerful story of a really heroic German uh, that saved my life, and in that, uh, I consider that it's probably the greatest film ever, not just because it, it involves me, but it goes against the general stream of communication that we get on television and so on, and it raises questions and consciousness. When you first uh, visited, um, saw the film, presumably, Everybody who came out, there was a silence. It is like the normal mind having to readjust to an impossible environment, yes? Uh, and it never entirely adjusts. That provocation of thought and consciousness is the profundity of the film, is the, is the strength of the film. The fact that people can't just say, oh, that, that was attractive, this was pretty, that was vicious, did you see that? You, you have to weigh things up against those things that you have naturally learned over your lifetime 
And here you suddenly have a perspective of reality that you are totally ignorant about. Where do you fit it into? Are you actually in the film at the end where they show all the mourners visiting Schindler's grave? Are you among that group of people who are actually seen at the end of the film? Um, I am uh, in both the scenes, including uh, near Schindler's grave, except that my image finished up on the editor's floor. <laughs> but on the other scene, where, where the whole group is advancing, uh, sort of into the future and so on, I, I appear there. But I was involved in other aspects of, of the film. I understand you received a, f a phone call from him yes. as he was preparing to make this. What were some of the questions that he had for you? Well, imagine living in the Sierra Nevada and somebody saying to you, oh, Steven Spielberg is calling you. <laughs> so I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> it actually turned out to be a producer of his. And um, they were interested in my involvement in the film. Uh, I was a documentary filmmaker, and I really wanted to make the documentary of the production of the film. But as you know, there are also commercial aspects to Hollywood. It had been already locked up. Uh, but on consultation levels and so on, uh, I was involved. But the creativity, the genius of communication without any question is Spielberg's uh, in the most profound way and he has continued in other films with the same uh, questioning of, of human fate which uh, Private Ryan uh, is a similar approach to difficult subjects. When you've been doing these presentations, I understand you've been doing presentations like the one you're going to give tonight for about the past 10 years, is that correct? I think 12. About 12 years. <laughs> On this journey, yes. as, as you've done these individual uh, presentations, what, what, have you, what have you learned in sharing your experiences? In other words, you, you're acting as an educator for these people who are coming to listen to you, but what have you learned in return? Yes, I, in my whole approach to life is to learn by teaching. And I learned a great deal. And the most profound uh, aspect of learning for me was that imagine a child between the age of seven and 10 going through six concentration camps under the impossible environment of the Holocaust. It leaves a psychological imprint, and it is one of total degradation the acceptance that you don't have a right to be alive and therefore you have no uh, demands on anyone else because you're not supposed to be alive. This sort of self-image limited my life uh, in relationship to my family, my children, to everything. The presentation of the lectures was actually a phenomenal therapy because for 12 years each presentation acted as a sort of a support group, you know, when you have problems and you share it with other people. The audience, I presented myself as I saw myself, but the audience accepted me in, in a totally different image. It took about 10 or 12 years for me to review my own self-image as, as a result of the education I got from the lectures. So I'm, I'm gaining from these lectures in every sense possible specifically um, where an old man can talk about himself <laughs> and, and people are usually quite interested in this. <laughs>